clear and it'll clear out model number two and the time. If I want to clear out the total time on the transmitter only, I use the select button and then I can clear out the total time. Next is model whether I want helicopter or acro. To enter the airplane, I hit the clear key for yes. Again, we want the helicopter, so we've got that. Next is the model name, and you can set all of this up with the right rocker. I think you can go ahead and figure that out. Finally, we're back to where we started with model select. With the system menu complete, we can go into the function menu. The function menu covers things like travel adjust, dual rates, exponential, throttle and pitch curves, and gyro sensitivity. All that we have to do to get into the DX6 function menu is to turn on the radio and lift up both orange buttons. Here are the reverse switches in the DX6. In an eCCPM system, the primary purpose of the reverse switches is to make sure that all three collective servos work in the same direction. So for instance here, I'll kick, kick the uh, aileron out of whack, and now these two are moving up with increased pitch, but this one is moving down. So I would just kick and reverse that to get all three moving in the same direction. For the same thing, elevator. If the elevator was out of whack, these two are going down, this one is going up, and I can go ahead and kick that, and again, all three servo arms are moving the same direction. For rudder, generally, we'll have to set up the helicopter and see which way the tail rotor servo works as to which direction the rudder servo is set, so we'll do that later. For gear, we have normal and reverse, and in the DX6, the gyro sensitivity is plugged into the gear channel. Now, on one side of that gear channel is plus 100, and on the other side of that gear channel is minus 100. So generally, you'll set heading hold on one side of it and rate mode on the other side of it, and that'll be tied in. We have it tied in to the elevator switch. Now, if you want rate mode at the top and heading hold at the bottom, or vice versa, the, the side that you get rate mode or heading hold is determined by reversing the gear switch. After that, we have pitch. Again, that simply makes sure that the pitch servo works in coordination with everything else. The throttle, the ESC or the speed controller will automatically take care of throttle at full high throttle and full low throttle, so normally we won't have to mess with the reverse in the throttle channel. There's the aileron, we've rolled all the way through. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the DX7. Here the reverse menu is very easy to see, and you can use the select button to highlight which channel you'd like to reverse. Two is aileron, three is elevator, four, da 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 da. Again, with a six channel receiver, we won't have a slot for aux two. Again, the speed control will set channel one for channel two, aileron and elevator. We'll have to wait till that's installed in the helicopter. Same thing for rudder, for the rudder direction. Channel five is the gear, which we'll be using for the gyro. Channel six for pitch, and again, channel seven not used. And so that finishes up the reversing switches in the DX7. Here's the dual rate screen in the DX6. Now, dual rates and Expo really go together, and they are together in the DX7. But for in the DX6, there are two screens. Here's the dual rate screen, and then here is the Expo screen. Let's go ahead and go to the board, run through a little theory, and then we'll come back and set up the dual rates in the DX6. So, first of all, for dual rate, if we run 100% throw, that's just a linear line. Here's stick movement, and here's servo throw. So this would be 
if we use dual rate to cut down the throw, say this is 80% dual rate, we're simply cutting down the total throw that goes into the swash plate. Now, we can add exponential on top of the dual rate. In the DX6, it does that through two menus. It has a dual rate and an expo menu. In the DX7, the dual rate and expo menus are combined. So, if you start out with, say, 30% exponential, you'll get something like this, where the control is soft around center and then comes in more as you get to the extremes. Now, you can also mix exponential on top of the dual rate and in this particular case, 30% exponential would look something like this, except it wouldn't go all the way to 100%. It would simply be limited. So those are the basics of how dual rate and exponential work together. Now that you understand dual rates and expo, let's go ahead and set up the dual rates in the DX6. We're looking at aileron, switch position, zero, and of course, when I pull the switch down, that's position one. Both the aileron dual rate and the elevator dual rate are set by the right switch because the left switch, we're using that for gyro sensitivity adjustment. So, all that I have to do is drop down to position one. Let's say I want 80% here. You could use 75 or whatever. There's 80%, and then all I have to do is cycle through to elevator drop that down to 80%, and then just confirm that when I go to position zero, there's 100% for elevator and 100% for aileron. Now again, I don't fly with dual rates, I don't really believe in dual rates, so I'm going to reset these numbers all back to 100%, but I did want to show you how the dual rate menu works. Here's the exponential screen. Exponential is even easier than the dual rates. In the DX6, we can only get positive exponential, or the kind of exponential that we want, where it's soft around center and then more extreme out at the ends. And it's very simple to set. Again, this switch sets it both for aileron and elevator for the cyclic controls. So all that I have to do is roll this up to 30% in position 0, and I want 30% in position 1 because I want to have the same control feel if the switch gets bumped. And then I can go to elevator, roll up to 30% in position 0, roll up to 30%, and that's all there is to setting the exponential in the DX6. Here's dual rate and exponential combined on one menu screen in the DX7. Notice that we're looking at aileron and also position zero. If I move the switch down to position one, that'll reflect that change. So we're setting position zero. I can use the select button to either select aileron and then that will go over to elevator and rudder and back to aileron. And so for exponential, I want to set that up to 30%. Now, on the DX6, we can only go one way with the exponential. Here, we can go the other way. And for instance, let me show you the type of exponential that you do not want. This is negative exponential, and notice how hot it would be around center, and then it would fade out up at the extremes of throw. On a Futaba radio, negative numbers give us the soft type of exponential that we want around, around center, and in JR, they do not. So I want to go ahead and clear that, and I want to use a positive number for exponential, and if I use a lot, you can see how the line really curves. This would be really soft around center, and it would really kick up at the edges. So I want to go ahead and set 30% exponential, which is right there. Now, I could come down, and if you wanted to, uh, position zero is in the is with the switch in the up position, you could come down to position one and set in 80% dual rate if you wanted things tamed down. I am not going to, but that's the option. Now, 
let's, now that we have 30% in position zero, let me go ahead and flip the switch, and here's position one. Whoops, I'm on the wrong thing. I have to go back to exponential. Now I have 30% exponential in position one and 100% dual rate. And in position zero, I have 30% exponential and 100% in dual rate. Now I can use the select switch and go to elevator, come down, and set plus 30. I want to keep the dual rate at 100%. Then I'll move the elevator dual rate switch down to position 1. Select exponential. Go to plus 30 and keep the dual rate at 100%. Now I can go to rudder and you could run exponential in rudder if you wanted to. Normally I do not. I'll just keep it a linear line. But you could dial in any amount of exponential that you wanted for rudder. And then even if you wanted dual rate, you could do that as well. Again, I don't use that. And that finishes up dual rate in Expo with the DX7. Here's sub trim in the DX6. The primary purpose of sub trim is that when the stick is exactly at half stick, all of the servo arms in this particular breadboard situation must be perpendicular or 90 degrees to the servo case. When we set this up in the helicopter, we're going to find that the arms are actually parallel to the servo case, but for this situation, this is all that we need to look at. So you want to make sure that the throttle is exactly at half stick. Now, you can go into some of the other uh, channels like mixing functions and you'll see a plus and minus and that will switch over exactly when you're at half stick. The other way to get exactly half stick is just a sight from the left side across and just make sure that the throttle stick is perfectly parallel to the cyclic stick. Now I've made a little mark on my throttle pot. I should have painted it white so that you can see it a little bit better but right there is exactly half stick. Now let's use the sub trim to make our servo arms 90 degrees to the servo. First for aileron, that's the wrong way. Uh, 20 looks pretty good. For the next channel, elevator, Again, the wrong way. The elevator is pretty close. Eight, that looks pretty good. For rudder, the rudder sub trim must be zero with a heading hold gyro. If the rudder trim is not zero, that's the same as putting a stick input into the gyro, and so it will want to move the nose to the left or to the right. So again, rudder sub trim must always be zero with a heading hold gyro. For gear, normally we won't play with the gear sub trim. That will be where we'll, uh, in the travel adjust, is where we'll adjust the sensitivity of the gyro, so we don't need to mess with that. Pitch, for the pitch sub trim, let's go ahead, and that's the wrong way. That looks pretty good from my vantage point, 22 or 23. One thing that you want to look for, generally you don't want more than about 25 to 30 points in sub trim either way. And the way you can double check that, I'm just going to zero out this sub trim, is that generally you'll have a servo arm. And if we take this servo arm and lay it on that way, that's way out of whack. And if we move it one spline, it's way out of whack there. And so if we flip it 180 degrees, now we can get very close mechanically. And then we can just fine trim or fine tune that with sub trim. After the pitch, 
throttle. We won't need any sub trim with throttle. The ESC or the speed control will take care of that. And now we're back to aileron. So we've set the sub trim so that all the arms are perpendicular to the servo at half stick. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that feature in the DX7. The sub trim menu is nice and visible. The select switch scrolls through throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, and if you keep pushing it, the screen automatically changes gear, pitch, aux 2, and back to the main screen. Now we're back to travel adjust in the DX6. Here we're looking at aileron or channel 2. In a conventional glow-powered helicopter with MCCPM, the travel adjust is used to set the cyclic throw. Here's plus 100 on the left side and minus 100 on the right side. In ECCPM, it's used for a totally different purpose. And the travel adjust for aileron, elevator, and pitch is used to set the swash plate perfectly level at full high pitch and then, and here you can see it's at plus 100, then when we go down to full low pitch, the number changes to minus 100. Normally these values will be plus or minus about 5%, so somewhere between 95 and 105%, and we'll see how this works up in the setup. So there's aileron, if I go down on the left switch, there's elevator, and again the same thing applies, I've got plus 100 at full high pitch, minus 100 at full low pitch. Next is rudder. Rudder will normally stay at 100%. If you need more tail rotor authority, what you can do is kick the travel adjust or the endpoints up to 125% to get a higher pirouette rate. But generally, if you want a higher pirouette rate, that can be accomplished by moving the tail rotor push rod out one hole on the tail rotor servo. So again, for our purposes, we'll probably just keep these at 100%. Next is gear. I want to discuss how we adjust the gyro sensitivity for the DX6. This assumes that the gyro is plugged into the gear channel and the gear channel is switched with switch E the elevator dual rate switch. Here's a side view of the transmitter. This shows the elevator dual rate switch in the up position and the ele elevator dual rate switch in the down position. When you go into the travel adjust of the gear channel, what you'll see is plus 100% with the switch in the up position and minus 100% with the switch in the down position. With the switch in the up position and a plus number, you're getting a heading hold. With the switch in the down position and a minus number, you're getting the rate mode. With the default values of plus 100 and minus 100, this is basically three-quarter gyro sensitivity of heading hold. The sensitivity will continue to increase as you go toward 150 in heading hold and the gyro sensitivity will continue to increase as you go toward minus 150 in the rate mode. To decrease the sensitivity, you just drop down. Now, if this switch works backwards from what you'd like, simply go into the reverse switch menu and reverse the gear channel. Here's what you'll see in the DX7. This assumes that the gyro sense menu is activated. When you activate it, off to the left, you'll see rate and position 0 at 50% and position 1 at 50%. These are the factory defaults. And what that means is that both switch position 0 and switch position 1 are set to nil, nothing, no sensitivity. As you go from 50% up to 100, you go into the heading hold half of the gyro sensitivity and so if you would set 75 percent in the transmitter you're essentially at 50 percent gyro sensitivity because that's halfway between the two extremes. Conversely if you go from 50 to zero 
when you're at zero, that means that the gyro is at maximum sensitivity in the rate mode. And again, if you would set this to 25, that would be half of the gyro sensitivity in the rate mode. Here's the gyro sense screen in the DX7. It's defaulted to the rudder dual rate switch. So for instance, the switch is in one position, zero is flashing. If I flip the switch, one will flash. Now, the rudder dual rate switch is exactly the same thing as the throttle hold switch. So if you're doing auto rotations, you really need to reassign the throttle hold switch to another switch that's listed in the throttle hold menu. I'd suggest the aileron dual rate switch, but again, you can take your pick. Since we're not going to manually adjust the gyro sensitivity, we want to do that automatically, and so we can bring up the auto screen, and this is where we can assign the gyro sensitivity to each flight mode. So let's drop down and set heading hold in position zero at 75%, just like we talked about on the board. And then for position one, we'll set this to 25%, so we have rate mode. Now, over in the flight mode, we want to do all of the bench setup and the initial hover checks where we adjust the, t the uh, length of the tail rotor push rod. We want to do that in the rate mode. So for normal, we want one. After we, do after we do those initial checks, then we can go to position zero for heading hold in the normal flight mode. For the aerobatics, we can go ahead and keep position zero. And then for throttle hold, if we do auto rotations with a non-driven tail rotor, we have to use the rate mode. So we want position one. If you have a helicopter that has a driven tail rotor, you can do your auto rotations in the heading hold mode, and then you can use position zero here. All right, let's go back to the DX6 and finish up the travel adjust menu. After gear, we've got pitch. So again, the pitch servo, plus or minus 5%. Throttle, for throttle, the speed controller or the ESC will automatically set the high and low limits of throttle. So throttle can be kept at 100%. There's aileron, we've rolled all the way around the screen. Now let's go ahead and look at travel adjust in the DX7. Again, things are just a little bit easier to see. We can use the select button and cycle through throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, and then it automatically goes to the second page with gear, pitch, aux two, and rolls back around to the first page. Here's throttle hold in the DX6. Believe it or not, we're going to auto-rotate the T-Rex 450, and so we need to activate throttle hold. Ooh, that was nice. All that I have to do is move the switch up or down and it'll kick on. Here it's minus 10 and I can vary that between minus 10 to minus 5, something like that. Basically we just want to make sure that at low stick when we flip on the throttle hold that the motor doesn't power the rotor system. Here's throttle hold in the DX7. Note that it's off. If I flip the throttle hold switch, uh, which is actually the rudder dual rate at the top right on the transmitter, on the top of the transmitter, if I flip the throttle hold switch on, it'll give me an on indication, and if I flip it back off, it'll show off. The hold position, again, I can vary that from 5 to minus 10, whatever it takes so that the motor does not run when the throttle hold switch is engaged. And then, Moving down, I can select the rudder dual rate switch for throttle hold, and this is where I have other options. I've got the elevator dual rate switch, aileron dual rate switch, aux two, or the gear switch. So again, I've got lots of options. I prefer the standard position, the rudder dual rate switch on the top right-hand side of the transmitter. Let's look at the normal throttle curve for the DX6. Now, the DX6 only has three points, and it's slightly limited, but it really works out pretty well. 
here's what we have. We've got low stick, half stick, and high stick. At low stick, we're going to set this percentage to zero. At half stick, it comes defaulted at 50%. At 50%, the line will run up and we'll set 100% at full stick, which is 10 degrees of pitch. Now, with that line, the helicopter is going to basically hover right around 70 to 75% stick, right around 3 quarters stick. If this rotor RPM is a little higher than what you'd like, you have the option of dropping the 50% point down. I like to start at 35%. When you do that, you can see that you get a little less power here at the three-quarter stick position, and therefore the, helicopter, the helicopter's rotor RPM will be a little slower with 35%. In terms of throttle trim, you want to make sure that the ESC is set up with low stick and low trim so that you